Uh, it is time for inviting our next speaker, Tonio Sims. Uh, let's welcome Tonio. So Hi, Tonio is a Hi. Tonio is a Python developer advocate at Vonage, uh, which is a cloud communications platform and is also one of the sponsors of EuroPython 2021. An interesting thing about Tonio is that Tonio is a former professional American basketball player uh, who earned entry into the Wisconsin Basketball Hall of Fame. Really good. Uh, today, uh, Tonio is going to talk about uh, a face off between two Python frameworks, the new kid, Fast API, and Flask. This is going to be a really interesting talk. OK, so let's get started. Over to you, Tonio. All right, thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. Uh, so welcome to the Flask versus Fast API face off. Um, OK, I feel your pain, right? Like I understand how frustrating it can be uh, choosing a framework in any language, especially like when you're first starting out with coding. It's like a vicious cycle. Like you choose one, then you want to choose the other, and you keep going back and forth. So imagine it's the year 1985, OK? And Back to the Future was the number one movie. And almost everyone had big hair, including me, actually. <laughs> um, so are you a sports fan? If you are, let me know in the which sports you like uh, and what teams that you like. Let me know in the chat, and we'll talk about it after uh, this presentation. Uh, because there was something else going on in 1985 that was really big. Uh, I'm not sure if you follow the NBA, but one of the biggest NBA basketball robberies of all time between the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Boston Celtics. It was uh, uh, Magic Johnson versus Larry Bird, right? Two of the biggest superstars. I mean, this robbery was huge. It was as big as, you know, football versus football. Uh, and my personal favorite, uh, European cuisine versus American food. Uh, but there's good news about rivalries and face-offs. Um, it helps, uh, they help to create innovation, uh, innovative ideas, and instead of competition, you can become collaborators. And I'm happy to say Magic and Larry Bird became best friends, and they're still besties to this day, and have even done commercials together. Uh, so you may be wondering, like, what does this have to do with Flask versus Fast API face-off? A lot. Uh, Flask and Fast API are kind of similar. Uh, both are very high performing and lightweight Python web frameworks. They are micro frameworks, uh, which means that they're just stripped down without all the bells and whistles. So it allows for flexibility. Uh, they're very different as well. Uh, one is battle tested, right, and rely more reliable. The other one is newer. Uh, and one comes with lots of built in libraries, and the other one you have to install some extensions. So, hi, I'm Tanya. Uh, and uh, I am a former professional athlete. I played pro ball in Europe, hence all the sports references, uh, turned Pythonista. Uh, and now I'm a Python developer advocate at Vonage. Uh, we are one of the leading communication API providers. Uh, you can use our APIs, right, to build uh, applications using video, voice, text messaging, and much more. Our customers range from those in the telehealth sector to insurance to startups. And we have a freebie for you. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this if you'd like. It's a, a coupon code to try our products. Uh, we give you free credits, to use our APIs, and you can build cool stuff. And it's redeemable through August 15th uh, this year. Mm. And you can redeem your coupon here uh, at dashboard.nexmo.com slash coupon. So this screen might be worth taking a screenshot of as well. So you know where to go to redeem your coupon. So before we begin our face off, I want to just set some expectations. So um, I might go back to the basics sometimes because uh, everyone here might be at different learning stages. Um, and I'm not sure about you, but when I first started learning how to code, it felt like my head was going to explode. Uh, so type in the chat, like, what was your journey like when you first started coding and how is it going now? I'd love to learn more about you. So this talk will focus on Rust APIs. And uh, but first, you'll have to grasp what is meant by an API. Uh, you might already know, but if you don't, an API is like a translator. So if you speak English, right, and you want to converse with someone who speaks, let's say, Pig Latin, and you can't understand each other, an API would sit in between the two of you and interpret your request and send back a response. Uh, and a REST API is a type of API that relies heavily on something called HTTP. And HTTP is a way to transfer data over the internet using a, what's called a client server model where the client makes a request and the server returns a response with data. 
And that response is typically a JSON object, okay, which is used to transport data. So two different systems can understand each other. So uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with Python dictionaries, which I'm sure you are, uh, JSON kind of looks like a Python dictionary with key value pairs. Okay, so let's our, let our face off between Flask and Fast API begin. Let's start with the Hello World application to get you up and running quickly. And so there's two things to understand running your Hello World application. The first are decorators, and decorators are just functions, okay, which modify the functionality of other functions. And they start with the at symbol followed by the name of the decorator. So a decorator, you can think of it like decorating a, a cake, right? It starts with something, something existing, then you modify it. Uh, and you add the frosting, the flowers, the sprinkle, the drizzle, whatever you like on your cake. Uh, the next thing to understand is a route. And a route just maps a function to a URL. So it knows which web page to take the user to who's making the request, okay? So in Flask, the Hello World app would look something like this. You'd have your decorator uh, here and it's routing or mapping this function home to the URL. Uh, in this case, it's a backslash, which is just the root or the index page and returns Hello World. And it gets served up on port 5000 by default, and you can always change the port and return Hello World here in the browser because it's doing a GET request. Similar to Flask, uh, Hello World and Fast API, the decorator is slightly different than Flask. Here it is. Um, it's just the decorator uh, at app.get. And in Fast API, the HTTP ver verbs get, post, put, delete, have their own decorators, which is really nice. Uh, and uh, it just returns a dictionary with Hello World here. And in the browser, it gets served up by default on port 8000 in Fast API, and you can always change the port, of course, and it returns Hello World in the browser. So both require a little coding to get a Hello World app up and running. Then the only main difference is the way the decorators looked. Uh, in Flask, it you know you have the at app that route, and then in Fast API, you have the at app dot get or get request. So running in development, right? Running locally on your machine first, so you don't put error prone code in production because people are gonna freak out if that happens. Well, people always freak out anyway, but um, so to run development in Flask, you have to export your uh, main Python file, which in this case is app.py like this. Then you run the Flask development server by running Flask run. Um, this is all done in your terminal. But what if you want to make a code change? Um, you'll have to keep restarting the development server every time. And in order to keep the development server running, you'll have to do something else uh, from your command line. You'll have to export development into the Flask underscore env variable. In Fast API, running in development, Fast API uses something called hot reloading. Uh, and hot reloading uh, keeps the app running when you're making code changes, right? So you don't have to keep restarting the development server over and over again. Uh, and what you can do is from the terminal, just pass in the reload flag. Um, and to start the server, uh, you just would type uvicorn main colon at where uh, main is the name of your, like your Python file that you're running. So in this case, it's main.py. And you can think of uvicorn as this like lightning fast server that allows your application to perform faster. So hot reloading saves you lots of development time because your application reloads automatically anytime you change the code, which is pretty sweet if you ask me. Okay, now you should be warmed up, right? It's uh, you're in the game, it's second quarter. Um, let's talk about HTTP methods in Flask and Fast API. And HTTP methods are just action-oriented verbs. Uh, we've already covered how to do get in Flask and Fast API, which is like a read-only uh, request. So let's see how to do a post in both of these frameworks. And a post, you're just creating a resource. It's kind of like you're submitting data to a form and it gets submitted to the server. So in Flask for HTTP methods, you um, we'll start with the post request, right? We'll just do a post request because we've already seen the Git. And here we want to create data and send it to the server. So let's say we have this list of dictionary called teams. So the difference is in Flask, with the post request, you'll have to specify post in uh, the methods list inside of your decorated route. Uh, 
this is the new team that you want to create. You want to add to the list of dictionaries uh, and you return it by using JSONify, uh, which turns Python dictionary into JSON so the server can interpret the data. Uh, but if you pull up the browser and you and if you go to the route, you'll get a 405 method not allowed error because this is a post request, right? So, uh, and by pulling up a web page, that's doing a get request. So you'll have to use an external tool called Postman. Hmm. And Postman acts as a client. So you can see your post request and the data that you've created in JSON format. Fast API HTTP methods. Uh, Fast API provides separate decorators for each HTTP method. And we'll see a few, we'll see an example in a few seconds. Uh, but in Fast API, the intentions are clear with having to specify uh, each decorator with an HTTP verb, right? And it also provides native support for JSONify. So it automatically turns a Python dictionary into JSON. Uh, and I'll show you why FastAPI has an edge when it comes to HTT methods, HTTP methods and routing. And that is because of automatic documentation, which is an interactive uh, API documentation where you can see your request in the browser, such as like your post request uh, and interact with them like passing in data uh, to see what you get back. So your response. It's like magic, honestly, right? It's going to make your life easier and you don't need any extra tools like Postman. Um, so Fast API automatic documentation. Fast API is based on something called Pydantic, uh, which is, uh, it comes with Fast API out of the box when you install Fast App, when you install Fast API. So there's no need to install Pydantic. And Pydantic is a framework for easily modeling and validating objects. With Pydantic, it takes the pain away because you don't have to write constructors, right? And constructors are things that it, it instantiates your objects. Um, so you, and you also get all the magic methods or the dunder methods, which are like helper functions. Pydantic also does data validation and uses Python type hinting. So uh, you'll get friendlier data validation areas, which of course reduces your debugging time, which is always nice. Uh, so, uh, Type hinting is pretty much what it sounds like, right? They hint at the variable type you're using and they help document code for other engineers that may be using your code and they help catch bugs sooner. So an example of type hinting would be just, you know, this variable player ID followed by the type integer or int. Pydantic also works together with something called Swagger UI for the automated documentation, which allows you to visualize and interact with your APIs. So let's do something more cool uh, so we can see the beauty of how automatic documentation works in Fast API. So to use Pydantic, you'll have to import something called base model. Uh, so our class that we're about to that you're about to see will inherit from base model. So inheritance works like this. Like if both your parents have brown eyes, it's highly likely that you will inherit their brown eyes as well. It's kind of the same with object-oriented programming, works the same way, inheritance. Uh, so here we're importing base model. Then we have a class called player that inherits from base model. Okay, so it takes all the properties and functions and all the stuff that comes with base model. Um, you're declaring your variables as type hints. So for example, player name string, player team string, player age type int. Uh, and inside of our function, we have a parameter. Um, and notice we're doing a, a post here. Uh, in the decorator. Inside of our function definition, we have a parameter we're passing in. It's called request. That is a type of player, right? So that is a type hint. We're saying this variable request is a type of our player class that we just created, and then we're just returning a dictionary. So to access your, doc your automatic documentation, you would just go to your local host slash docs. And you can see things like the schema, uh, it, which is a, like a skeleton for your model with your variables. Um, and you can see which variables are required uh, with hints, the, you see like the asterisk, the red asterisk next to them. So those are the required variables or your optional variables. You can try it out. There's a try it out button to test your API endpoints uh, by passing in values for your variables. So here we're just passing in uh, Michael Jordan for the player name, 
Chicago Bulls for the player team and the player age 32. And then you can execute. You just click execute and it's going to give you the response body back or what the server will receive for the post request. So once again, no need to use Postman. You can just do everything right here from your browser. Um, you also get back a curl request, right? Uh, which lets you talk to a server by sending data or making a request through the command line. Uh, it generates it for you so you don't have to write it from scratch. And I've written curl from scratch. You may have too, and uh, it is time consuming. Flask doesn't have any built-in feature for documentation generation. So you have to use an extension uh, called Flask Swagger. And you have to do a lot of configuration um, as it doesn't come out of the box with Swagger. So since automatic documentation comes out of the box with Fast API, um, you don't have to install anything. And Fast API also comes with Pydantic out of the box, which uses the automatic documentation. Data validation, which could be client or server-side validation, which uses our lovely friend Pydantic. Um, so Fast API data validation, uh, we are creating a class here called login, okay, that once again inherits from base model or the Pydantic model with our type hinted variables in our class, username, password, agree to terms. Um, so in our function, let's just check to see if uh, username is equal to Jane Doe and password is equal to one, password one, two, three, four, five. Uh, if it is, uh, then it's a success. Otherwise, it's going to fail. So we pull up our automated documentation again, click try it out. Let's pass in none for the username, but we're keeping the password the same. And agree to terms is optional, but let's just make it true here. So Pydantic is gonna work its magic and you'll get a friendly error message telling you exactly what the error is. And here it says uh, error is uh, expecting value, which is right on, right on the money, right? Because we passed a none for username and it's expecting a value and we didn't pass it one. Flask data validation. Uh, Flask does not have any in-house data validation support, uh, but you can install the powerful Pydantic package for data validation though. So once again, Fast API comes with Pydantic, uh, which will give you friendly error messages and reduce time uh, spent debugging. So, all right, it's fourth quarter. We're coming to an end now. Let's talk about like the templates folder. Um, you may have seen this if you've done some uh, web application development. Um, the templates folder stores your HTML files. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to build a web application. And in Flask, the templates folder by default, it looks, you have to create the templates folder in Flask uh, in your file structure and it looks for that templates folder uh, in a, quote unquote, templates folder that you've created. So it stores your HTML files here. And you have to use something called Jinja to display your variables in HTML. And Jinja, Jinja is a templating engine uh, that allows you to write code similar to Python to display your HTML. And it looks something like this, like, so here's your HTML file. And to display variables in Jinja, you have to surround them with uh, double curly braces. So in Fast API, you have to install Jinja and you have to define the templates folder in your code. Uh, so when you install Flask, you also get Jinja it comes out of the box, which is really nice for that. Versus in Fast API, you have to install it separately. Running in production, going live so the whole world can see. You know, it's scary sometimes, uh, but uh, Fast API in production, you can use something called an ASGI web server. It's Think of it as like a very, very fast uh, web server, um, and it's asynchronous. So asynchronous means this. So imagine this, you have a bunch of like requests coming in, um, 
they don't have to wait for the other ones to complete or finish before they start processing. Like they can process at the same time, right? Which makes it makes for uh, fast processing. And Flask production, uh, you have to use something called WSGI, uh, which stands for, it's a Python web server gateway interface. Uh, it's been the Python standard for many years, uh, but that is changing. Um, so uh, WSGI is synchronous, right? It's like the total opposite of asynchronous. So for example, imagine that you have a bunch of requests. Uh, they have to wait in line, right, for the others for the other requests before before it to complete. So it's kind of like a queue. Um, so imagine waiting in line at the movie theater. I know moving theater is kind of like a thing of the past, but hopefully they'll come back. Uh, so you're standing in line at, this, at the movie theater and you're um, at the end of the line um, and you have to wait, right, for the other people in front of you to get their, to get their ticket. So that's kind of how a uh, synchronous web server works. So, I mean, ASGI makes for faster performance in your web applications uh, because of the way they process requests asynchronously. So I feel like, you know, Fast API definitely does have the edge here. Oh, there's so many things we didn't get to talk about today because we had limited time, but uh, I mean, we could have talked about path parameters or you might know them by URL parameters, which returns a single item. So for example, if you uh, want to see the details for one item, um, it would get the ID for that item through the URL you pass in and return. So for example, if you want to get, a, you know, you have like this player class uh, and you want to see the details for uh, one player, maybe it's Michael Jordan, <laughs> um, you would just pass in an ID for Michael Jordan, which maybe is could be two, through the URL and then it would return the details for that player. Testing, uh, we could, could have talked about testing, uh, you know, with pie test and unit test. Uh, and then there's also modularity, which is really important. Um, so, uh, you know, as your app grows, you know, how do you break it down into modules so you can port your code or so other developers can also use those modules too. Um, and Flask, Flask uh, uses something called blueprints for modularity and in Fast API uh, uses API router, I believe. So my winner, drum roll, please. <laughs> okay, so um, this is how I would choose personally. So I would use Flask for this, for these things. Okay, so, you know, we, as we said, Flask is battle tested. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It's reliable. There's tons of docu documentation, lots of user communities. Um, if you want to quickly prototype something, you know, definitely use Flask. Uh, and if you want to do some web application development, you can use Flask as well for that. That's what I would use it for. Uh, use Fast API if you uh, want speed, right? Uh, not only in performance, but in development time, right? Because it's, uh, I mean, the way Fast API is designed, it's really uh, nice that it speeds up your uh, development time. I would use Fast API if you want to reduce errors and bugs, uh, right? Because of type hinting and our lovely friend, Pydantic. And use Fast API for, definitely use it for API development. I really do believe it's going to become the standard in the near future and many years to come. And also for, uh, for Fast API being so new, uh, it has absolutely amazing documentation. Uh, I'm really impressed by the documentation that uh, it has and you can find what you're looking for online. Um, do a simple Google search or uh, you know, pull up their, their documentation online. So, so thank you so much for your time today. And also thank you to the Euro Python conference. You guys do such an amazing job of putting this conference together. Um, I know there's a little bit of challenges, you know, with the pandemic, but um, Euro Python, you guys did awesome. Uh, and uh, I would love to hear from you. So uh, this is where you can find me on Twitter. I'm just at, at Tanya Sims. Uh, give me a follow, I'll follow you back. And uh, yeah, so you can ask me any questions you want about sports or Python or anything else. So thank you very much. Thanks, Tonya. It was a pleasure listening to you. Uh, we have a couple of questions lined up, sure. and uh, I'll just read out them uh, for you. Okay. 
So let me display them as well on the screen. So the first question is uh, basically it's from a fan of basketball here, uh, ah. named Sebastian. He's firstly thanking you for the talk, and next is the question. So which framework is yeah. magic and which one is first? <laughs> So for oh, all wow. the basketball <laughs> fans out there, uh, LA Lakers and uh, Boston Celtics fans, uh, this question may interest you. That's, oh my God, this is such an amazing question. I love this question. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is tough. This is really tough. Um, I mean, like I was saying, like towards the end of my talk, I feel like, um, I mean, both Flask and Fast API definitely have their, uh, you know, have their pros and cons. And so uh, it's kind of hard to choose. I mean, Magic and Larry Bird are pretty comparable, like in terms of like talent. Uh, but I do think moving forward in the future, I think I do think Fast API will uh, be the like will be the standard for especially for like API development. So. So, yeah, I mean, Magic Johnson was like my favorite player growing up. And I also really like Larry Bird, too. So. Uh, yeah, so that's how I answer that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. So the next question is: uh, Flask two dot now looks like Fast API. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the same is not reflected in the docs yet. So, what's your opinion about the same? Yeah, I definitely kind of agree. Actually, I feel like uh, like when I was learning Fast API, it was kind of like uh, you know it took some of the best feature. Oh, wait. Actually, you're saying. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Fast API took some of the best features from like uh, Flask and Django and kind of like stripped it down and scaled it down. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, Flask 2.0 does look a little bit like like Fast API. So I haven't played around with Flask 2.0 as much because I've been uh, more of my time has been spent doing Fast API development using mm -hmm. with using APIs. So all right. OK, I hope that answers the question. Uh, next question is, uh, why would one want to switch from Django to Fast API or Flask? Are there any differences based on performance or scalability? Yeah, I definitely think uh, so you'd want to switch from Django to Fast API or Flask just because so uh, Django is a, is a great framework. Um, don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, I feel like it's maybe slightly bloated, you know, but uh, um, but it does have a lot of good features as well. Um, so you'd want to switch to like Flask or Fast Flask or Fast API because they're micro frameworks and you have a little bit more flexibility uh, and kind of like the packages or the libraries that you'd want to install. Um, I think too with both of those Fast API and Flask, um, if you want to get something up quick, I would definitely use one of those frameworks. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, the next question is. Uh, Based on the community support and documentation available, uh, which one would you recommend, Fast API or Flask? Ooh, oh wow. Um, okay, so you know, Flask has been around for a while now, and it does have a very uh, supportive community, uh, and it is reliable. It has a lot of documentation, but uh, on the other hand, Fast API, even though it's a newer framework, there is the documentation is amazing. Honestly, uh, it's very <laughs> thorough. Um, if you just go to their uh, like their documentation site, uh, I was really blown away actually by like by their documentation uh, and just how complete it was. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see more questions about Fast API like on Stack Overflow, and I think the community is really growing as well. So um, okay. yeah, I don't know if I could say which one is better. I mean, I think like for I mean, at least for me, I'm going to be moving forward doing more Fast API stuff. So that's kind of how I would okay. choose. Nice. OK, so we are towards the end of the session. Just the last question. Uh, and it's an interesting <laughs> one. What do you enjoy more? Uh, is it basketball or coding in Python? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I would say they're definitely a tie. Uh, now, I haven't <laughs> played basketball in a while, but um, I uh, I love, obviously, I love coding in Python, or else I wouldn't be here. But uh, um, yeah, I would say both. OK. Nice. Uh, all right, so uh, that ends the session. So thanks a lot, Tonio, for joining and delivering a really nice talk. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah, me. I hope uh, people enjoyed it a lot. All right, it sounds good. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, Bye, everybody. Yeah. So anybody who has uh, further questions can please join the breakout knee room uh, where Tonio will be present to answer your questions. And uh, in 10 minutes, we are having the lightning talk starting. So. Tune to them as well.
Thanks, everyone, and stay tuned.